Hello everyone, welcome to DIY Outdoor Life. Today we are going to be talking about why you should not upgrade your RV battery to a lithium battery. There is enough content out there telling you that you should. Surprise, most of that content is sponsored. So I've been working with these lithium batteries for years. I install them in a number of locations and I would not use one on my RV. Now when I'm doing a battery install for somebody, typically I do not even consider lithium iron phosphate batteries until the customer's budget is over $4,000. So I'm gonna share my findings with you today and hopefully you can make with it what you will and we'll save some money. So for starters, I kind of have to admit that a video like this seems impossible to make. This is an extremely complicated topic, and most people who want to upgrade the battery on their camper do not want to become an electrical engineer. But this is not a three minute type of video. There's some dense content that I'm going to try to move through and keep it beginner friendly. Now, the other issue going on here is that millions of dollars are being spent to market lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're being marketed as drop-in ready. The situation going on here is that the camper and RV industry is enormous. We go through a lot of batteries. Obviously, these companies want a market share of these batteries. They're doing a really good job. I'm not talking about posters in an RV dealership. I'm talking about targeted ads, social media presence. They're answering questions on the forums. And to be frank, they're spending money on people with better YouTube channels than me to get them to sling these batteries. So I'm gonna try to counter this today, and it's a little difficult. You'll probably have to be patient, but I'm gonna try to get you a system that works great and save you a ton of money. So let's check it out. So we gotta start somewhere. We might as well start with the basics. Your RV needs a battery. Most of these RVs are 12 volt systems and they need a 12 volt battery. A lot of the converters on RVs require a battery to function properly. So whether you're plugged into shore power or not, you still need to have a high quality battery on your RV. Now, the type of battery that I recommend is an AGM, an absorbent glass mat battery. You can use gel, marine, hybrid batteries, but what we're looking for is a deep cycle, 12 volt lead acid battery. Now, back in the day, we used to refer to batteries two different ways. It was either a car battery or a house battery. A car battery does a really good job discharging a lot of energy very quickly. It starts our car and the alternator takes over. A house battery has deep cycling capabilities. You can draw small amounts of energy off of it for a very long period of time. So we're gonna wanna go with a deep cycle house battery. So whether it's AGM, gel, hybrid, marine, or a lithium iron phosphate battery, you're getting a deep cycle battery for your RV. This is very important for starters. The reason I say this is because a lot of times when I see people with a thousand dollar lithium iron phosphate battery, like a Lion Energy or like a, like a Battleborn battery, when you talk to the customer, a lot of times they had a cheap car battery, something measured in cold cranking amps. It didn't do the job for them and then they were convinced to upgrade and spend a ton of money that they didn't need to do. So we're moving along quickly here, but now we have a high quality deep cycle battery like an AGM. The next thing we have to learn about is capacity. Capacity is what matters to us, reserve capacity, if we like to go disperse camping. Obviously most people that end up with a lithium battery are looking to go disperse camping for longer. The truth is, you can get whatever capacity you want with a battery like an AGM. You're not limited to a specific number. So you can get a very large AGM just like you can get a very large lithium battery. So capacity in and of itself is not a limitation here. Now, it's very difficult for me to calculate your capacity without some sort of consultation. So I'm gonna make some blanket statements. With an AGM battery, 
100 amp hours is considered entry level for boondocking or dispersed camping. That means if your battery is under 100 amp hours, you might be able to go a weekend using lights and a few small things. But if you have refrigeration, you watch a movie, you charge your phone, you use a CPAP machine, 50 amp hours is not going to cut it. So just like with the car battery, a lot of folks have a camper with a very small capacity. When it doesn't work for them, they are now susceptible to be hooked with lithium iron phosphate being the only alternative for a larger capacity. So if AGM batteries are so good, how come so many people are switching to lithium? The truth is AGM and all deep cycle lead acid batteries have some inherent shortcomings. The marketing for lithium is that they solve these shortcomings. And for the most part, that's true. But on an RV application, what I'm gonna tell you today is the problems the lithium batteries bring with them are more complicated and expensive to solve than the problems they're fixing on these AGMs. So let's start with talking about the shortcomings of deep cycle lead acid. So the shortcomings with lead acid batteries start with the fact that there's lead in them. They're heavy, they're large. You can only use 50%. It's got a 50% working capacity and they don't last forever. The listed life expectancy is three to five years. If you take these things in in the winter and put them on a battery tender and you don't subject them to a super discharge where you run them to low voltage, it's not uncommon to see a high quality AGM battery go seven years. Just like the car battery that you use to start your car, if you take care of it, you don't have to replace it every three years. So these shortcomings are real, and the way that we have worked around it has been successful for decades. So we're gonna talk about the simple workarounds and the hidden issues with the lithium replacements. So it's true, these lead acid batteries are large and they are heavy. Typically what people don't know is that your RV was engineered to carry these batteries. Oftentimes it's factored into your tongue weight ratio and your overall tongue weight that you can expand these batteries to some serious capacities without tipping things out of balance. Of course you should know some basics about tongue weight. I'll tag that video up here so you can learn about balancing your trailers. But even this tiny teardrop can handle 225 amp hours of AGM battery without getting out of balance or overloading the towing capacity of some of the smallest tow vehicles on the road. So if your batteries are located inside the camper or you've already loaded up on weight up here, it gets a little bit more tricky. But what I'd like to explain is that it's always cheaper and easier to rebalance your trailer to carry the weight up here than it is to change the chemistry of your battery. So weight and size alone need not be a determining factor when switching to lithium. So the next thing that's a pain with lead acid batteries is the 50% working capacity. We can only use 50% of what's inside this battery as far as capacity. This is one of the things that contribute to their size and weight. And it's one of the reasons why lithium batteries are lighter and smaller. But we've already factored this in and accounted for this for years. We keep these batteries above 12.2 volts. So you can get a little cigarette lighter input that tells you the voltage. I'll throw that in the description. You can use your multimeter. But if your camper came with a meter inside, that's rated for a lead acid battery. When that meter says you're empty, you're usually at 50% of your lead acid battery capacity. If you switch to lithium, that meter is not going to work anymore. You're gonna have to upgrade that and you're still going to have to test the voltage of your battery. Just because you have 100% working capacity doesn't mean you don't know, need to know what capacity you're at. So you're gonna wanna know if you're at 10%, 20%, or 90%, whether you have a lead acid battery or not. So this 50% uh, working capacity is more related to the weight and size that we've already addressed. 
Okay, so I hope you're still with me. We're trying to move quick. The last one is the biggest one, and it has to do with life expectancy. And this is what I hear most people refer to when they are speaking of the virtues of a battle-borne battery or any lithium iron phosphate battery. Your AGM has that three to five years, you can get seven. A lithium iron phosphate battery is advertised as having 2,500 life cycles. That's a ton of life cycles. These are the only batteries I would use for home energy backup, off-grid cabins. But what happens when you apply them to a trailer is that all of that changes. Do not believe the hype of drop-in replacement. For one, they're subjected to more abuse. And it's not the cells that are gonna go bad, it's the BMS, it's the wiring, it's a temperature sensor. When you're shaking this thing down the road, that does have an effect on life cycles. But the much bigger effect is that those life cycles are based on perfect charging. And perfect charging is not what we're gonna get in a drop-in replacement. So the first thing that has to go is the charger on your camper. This uh, teardrop camper here has a charger that's built into the converter. This is a three or $400 component and it can cost as much as a thousand or even $1,500 to replace. Now the folks advertising and trying to sell lithium iron phosphate batteries will tell you that you do not have to change the charger. But when you open the owner's manual or read the data on the profiles, it becomes very clear that you do. You see, lithium iron phosphate batteries require a top balance. It means that they need to be 100% full. The charger has to recognize that, and then it steps up into high voltage. This equalizes the cells and keeps the battery healthy. Your camper charger will never do that. It is not going to do that. And when you call Lion Energy Battleborn and talk about that, they say it's a drop-in battery as long as periodically you take it out and install it to a lithium charger. Most people don't know about this when they make the swap to this battery. So it's really important to know that although your RV charger will bring this battery, a lithium battery, up to about 80%, it does not take it to 100%. So your 200 or 225 amp hour AGM, even with the 50% working capacity, has more juice in it than this $1,000 battle-borne battery when you're subjecting it to a standard WFCO on your camper. So the same is true with our charge controllers for solar. You can subject AGMs to PWMs and really cheap charge controllers. You can spend $50 on one and get a good fast charge with an AGM battery. With lithium iron phosphate, it is super, super important that we go with a high quality MPPT. Battleborn has set up a hotline that you call when you buy one of their batteries to help you select a solar charge controller. They almost always recommend a $300 Victron charge controller that can match the parameters of the battery. So you've spent $1,000 on the battery. You've spent over $1,000 on the charger. You need to buy another couple hundred dollar charger when you take the battery out. You spent $300 instead of 50 on the charge controller. You've now spent thousands of dollars to get this lithium battery to work properly and to get the most value out of the battery. These AGM batteries are three or $400 for super capacity batteries. Most of us don't even need more than a 100 amp hour battery. But if we do, we can put two six volt golf cart batteries together in series to get 225 amp hours. We can buy a simple box to drop it in and we are literally spending less than a quarter of the money that you are when you're installing a lithium iron phosphate system properly. And if you're thinking that you can skimp out on a lithium iron phosphate battery, if you take nothing else from this video, take my word that you cannot. Having serviced these batteries for years, I won't go anywhere near these AliExpress, Alibaba, and now they're flooded on Amazon, these cheap 
lithium iron phosphate batteries. When you open up a battle-borne battery, you have cylindrical cells. Some of these batteries use prismatic cells. Some of them use flat packed cells. They are networked together with copper wiring. There's a computerized battery management system. There's a low temperature sensor and a high temperature sensor. These batteries are advanced. And a battle borne battery is a work of art and I would recommend them. They are the gold standard. Lion, Lion Energy is excellent too. These knockoff cheap ones that you're buying on Amazon, when you open them up, have cells put in, in them with spray insulation to hold them in place. There's little tiny fine speaker wires holding things together. Some of them are missing temperature sensors. With a lithium battery, if you charge it below freezing, you cause lithium plating. It ruins the battery. If you use it at very cold temperatures, like you know, four or even negative zero Fahrenheit, you ruin the battery as well. That's why the quality batteries have temperature sensors. These cheap ones do not, and when they do have them and you test them, half the time they don't work. So very important here, I work with lithium batteries. I would not put one of these cheap ones near where I go to sleep. So maybe you knew all of this already, or maybe money's not an object and you don't mind upgrading these components. The truth is you're gonna have an excellent system with a high-end MPPT charge controller, an upgraded power converter, and a high-quality lithium iron phosphate battery. The thing that not enough people are talking about is the most expensive part of this whole equation. This is a seven pin plug. When you install this into your tow vehicle, you're creating a parallel connection between the electrical system on your camper and the electrical system on your tow vehicle. Most of you don't even mix and match the batteries in your TV remote at home, and you are taking one of your most expensive investments and turning it into a science experiment. Your poor tow vehicle. Now, a lot of different things can happen here, but most of the time, you have an alternator in your vehicle that is a very inefficient system. Typically, they waste 50% of the energy they create in the form of heat energy. When they get too hot, they shut off. So if you're towing your very low resistance lithium iron phosphate battery with a high resistance alternator and tow vehicle battery, what happens is you can overheat your alternator, then your electrical system's gonna run off your car battery, your car battery is gonna break down more frequently, and most of the time folks are not even noticing that they're spending thousands more dollars in the life of their lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, what's worse about this whole equation is that when you go on the forums and you see people saying, hey, I got a new lithium iron phosphate battery and it's not charging from my tow vehicle, I try to tell them, you should just cut the charging cord from your tow vehicle. Don't subject your poor tow vehicle to your new science experiment. Spend money back there on the camper. Upgrade the charge control, yada, yada, yada. You guys know that stuff. Unfortunately, if there's thumbs downs on this video, it's the same people that give me a thumbs down on those forums. They've drank the Kool-Aid and they swoop in and say, oh, no, no, no. What you need to do is install a DC to DC charge controller, another several hundred dollar device, um, big thick copper wires, another thousand dollars down the drain to get this lithium iron battery to work. What they don't tell you most of the time is you should also probably get a super duty alternator if you're gonna install a DC to DC charge controller. When are we gonna stop the insanity? Can you see where we're going here? You've now spent like five or $6,000 in order to be able to say that you have a lithium iron phosphate battery or a Battleborn or a Lion Energy battery on your RV. We can do so much more with AGM. So now for the solutions. Maximize the size of your capacity as per your needs. Do you need 100 amp hours? Do you need 200 amp hours? 
go with the biggest set of AGM that you can handle. You can buy big ones like I do, 110 amp hour batteries. You can put those in parallel to add to the capacity. You can go with a golf cart battery that's 225 amp hours and wire it in series. I know somebody that has two of those series wired together in parallel. That's 450 amp hours of AGM capacity. Make sure you understand what your size and weight restrictions are and go up to that point if you need that much energy. Next, take the money that you saved buying a lead acid battery and start investing in charging. We're gonna put water back in the bucket as fast as we take water out of the bucket. So with all of the money that you saved with the AGM, go with solar panels. Solar panels on the roof are great because they're always charging, there's no setup, and they're hard to steal. Solar panels on the ground are great because they collect more wattage. You can park in the shade and put the panels in the sun. You can move the panels once or twice a day to redirect them to the sun. That's a very effective strategy to get more wattage back into the battery. So an AGM with a nice solar array is cheaper a lot of times than a lithium iron phosphate battery. Take the money that you would have spent updating your converter and adding things to your tow vehicle and buy portable power stations. This one is a thousand bucks. It costs the same price as, a, as the lithium iron phosphate battery and it has 91 or 92 amp hours instead of 100. You're also getting a pure sine wave inverter and high speed USB ports to be able to run your CPAP machine regulated ports to run your refrigerator. Plug your refrigerator into a device like this. It's regulated, it's gonna run it better and take that load off of your camper battery. You can charge this thing from the same solar panels that you charge your camper with. So for the same price as a lithium battery, you can use this thing in a lot of intelligent ways and the 300 and some days a year you're not camping, bring this thing to a barbecue. Plug your refrigerator or Wi-Fi router in when the power goes out. There's wiser, more valuable ways to spend your money when you're looking to upgrade your RV's electrical system. Now back up for a second because I got to wrap this thing up. I'm going to put videos maybe like here and down here on reviews for portable power stations. There's links in the description for different batteries and gadgets you can use to help out. Make sure that you like and subscribe the video. And there's a new feature in the description called Buy Me A Coffee. You guys know I'm never gonna get a sponsorship if I keep telling you how to save your money instead of how to spend your money. So if you saved a couple bucks today or I helped you out with something, consider buying me a coffee. It really helps, uh, helps support the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.